Good morning, St. Andrews Brampton, and thank you so much for the invitation for me to join you this Sunday. For those who may or may not know me, my name is Robin. At camp, they call me Mapes, and I am the camp director of the Cairn Family of Camps. And I've come down to do a couple of camp Sunday services in Brampton, but today I'm coming to you from Baysville. So this is my backyard in Baysville. I live just seven minutes away from camp, and so it's definitely springtime here, and uh, we're enjoying gardens and outside and no snow, as I'm sure you are there in Brampton as well. Now, one of the things that we talk a lot about at camp is the feeling of community and the fact that we at camp are a community and that we are able to uh, support each other and show love for each other within that community. And I'm sure that you are part of other communities, whether it's a camp community or maybe a school community or your family is a community or your church community um, or maybe a you know girl guides or scouting or something like that. So what communities are you a part of? I want you to think of one or two of them that you have in your head. What groups are you a part of? And then how do you serve that community and how does that community serve you? Because I think that that's one of the important parts of a community is that there's something that you're able to take from that community, but then also something that you offer to that community. So what do you offer to your communities that you're part of? And what do you gain from those communities, whether that's, uh, you know, experience and, you know, refining your soccer skills or your hockey skills, or if it's something like love and support and community like you might in a church community. Okay, so think about those things. And now at camp, we have something that we call the four S's. And the four S's are four tools that we can use to make sure that we're making good and intentional decisions that support our community. And those four S's are safety, servanthood, stewardship, and self-esteem. Okay, safety, servanthood, stewardship, and self-esteem. And we go and we ask ourselves, is it safe? Is it serving our community? Is it building other people's self-esteem? And are we being good stewards of our earth and our environment? And if we can answer yes to all four of those questions, then we know it's a good and intentional decision for our community, and we can go ahead and do whatever those things that were that we were thinking about doing that we use the four S's test for. So I want to zoom in on one of those right now, which is servanthood. And we talk a lot about servanthood and service in the church, but I have a, I came across another cool example of uh, ways that things and people and uh, beings serve each other, and I wanted to share that with you. So we know that you know, I'm standing outside here, and uh, we know that we have kind of a, a mutualistic, that's a fun science word, a mutualistic relationship with trees, for example, and plants as us as humans, where the in order to breathe, we need oxygen to breathe, right? So we, when we breathe in, we breathe in oxygen. When we breathe out, we breathe out carbon dioxide. And the trees, they have the opposite way of respiration or of breathing. So they breathe in our carbon dioxide and they breathe out oxygen. So we breathe in oxygen, out carbon dioxide. And if I was a tree, I would breathe in carbon dioxide and breathe out oxygen for people to be able to breathe and other animals as well. But there's some other cool animals that I wanted to share with you uh, that I have got a couple examples here. So this first one, I'll, I'll hold up my pictures close to the screen so you can see it. You see that one? Those are clownfish and a sea anemone. And what's cool about the clownfish and sea anemone is that the clownfish, they live in the sea anemone and the sea anemone often um, is poisonous to other, uh, other fish, but the clownfish are immune to it. So uh, when they swim in and out of the sea anemone, they get protection because they get protection uh, that like they don't get shocked and in return the sea anemone protects them from their predators. But the other thing that the clownfish does for the sea anemone is that it attracts other fish to come because they say, oh look, a tasty meal, uh, and then we'll come in and try to eat the clownfish, but then of course the sea anemone um, gets its food instead. So that's a cool little uh, mutualistic relationship where they serve each other. Now here's another one, another underwater one, but you see there, I need to make sure I can let you see that picture. See that? So that's obviously a shark, but do you see what is attached to the shark? You see that right there and that right there? Those are a type of fish called remora fish. And the remora fish stick to the underside of the shark and act to, to clean and to groom the shark. And in that way, uh, they get some food and the shark gets to stay clean and make sure that it doesn't have anything, any parasites or anything growing on it. 
And then the other thing that happens is that uh, when the shark makes a kill and is able to eat its food, then the Romora fish get to clean up after that as well. So they get an additional source of food. And you know what's even so cool is that the Romora fish go in and out of the shark's teeth, cleaning its teeth. And the shark doesn't eat it because they have this mutualistic relationship. Uh, they have this relationship where they serve each other. Pretty neat, hey? I've got two more here for you. So this one here, this might be a familiar one to us. It's a bee. Oh, excuse me, that was my rooster growing in the background there. All right, so there's a bee. But it's inside a flower. And uh, it, bees and other insects serve to pollinate flowers whoops. Um, and that allows flowers to be able to reproduce because the bee you can see on it it's got all those little dots that's the pollen from the flower and so when the bee flies from flower to flower collecting nectar for it to eat then it also serves the flowers by being able to pollinate them so they have this serving each other relationship and then finally this one i think is quite funny you see that there so this is an impala, which is a kind of antelope-like creature, and on it there's a bird. So this bird is called an oxpecker, and the oxpecker goes around and perches on grazing animals like zebras and impala and rhinos and that sort of thing, and actually eats bugs and eats uh, little things off of the off of the animals. So the animals are grazing along, and they just come and let these birds come and sit on them. And the birds again get their food, and uh, the animals get groomed. And then another thing that the oxpecker does is that anytime there's a predator in the way, it will fly up into the air. And so it alerts all of the impalas or the rhinos or whatever that there is a predator around. And so it acts as a warning signal. So here's my, again, four different pictures we just looked at here of different ways that um, animals serve each other in, in the world. And just like the animals, we have the opportunity to show love for each other and serve each other within our communities. And so as you go forward from today, I would like you to think about those communities that you're part of and how you can show love for those people, how you can show love and how you can serve them. And I know that we have a little bit of a challenge at this point because we're not able to be physically with all of those people except for the people in our homes. But how can you serve them? How can you show love? How can you reach out and express love for someone else uh, over the course of the day today or over the course of the week. So I'd like to leave you with that thought. We'll close together in prayer. Uh, and before we do, I, again, I just wanted to say thank you so much for letting me join you and for sharing a little bit with you. And uh, I look forward to the time that we're able to spend time in community in real time as well. But let's close together in prayer. God, thank you for the opportunity to... Um, serve each other, to show love for each other. And thank you for all of the examples that were given in our own lives and from nature, from the animals around us, that it's just so spectacular the way that the world works and can work in such harmony uh, and show reciprocity to each other. Please and give us the strength and uh, the wisdom and the encouragement to go out and use the skills and talents we have to serve each other within our neighborhoods and our communities that we are a part of. And we're so grateful for those communities. They're such a blessing in our lives. So thank you. In your name we pray. Amen.